Hey kids, this is Aaron from the podcast that wouldn't die. And Kevin and I use Zencaster. You think you're better than us, that you're using something else? You're wrong. Zencaster's the place to be. Who are you to deny it? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sound and up to 4K video with your guests. Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use our code DIEHARD and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. We want you to have the same experiences we do for all our podcasting and content needs. It's time for you to share your story. Only a fool will give up a chance for a 30% discount. about being with someone where no one can see you, don't. Because this summer, a legend of terror isn't just a campfire story anymore. Welcome to the latest episode of the podcast that wouldn't die. I'm your host, Kevin. With me, as always, is Aaron. Hello. This week on the podcast that wouldn't die, we discuss the horror classic, The Burning... Starring Jason Alexander, Fisher Stevens, uh, Holly Hunter, if, and a blink and you'll miss her performance. Uh, totally missed her. Totally yeah. missed her. It's a missing situation. In, in a movie co-written by Harvey Weinstein and produced nice. the first movie produced by Miramax. Good times. Each week in the podcast that wouldn't die, we discuss guilty pleasures and forgotten classics of the horror and sci-fi genre with a comedic twist. Aaron, what's the latest? How are you doing? Well, a couple of things. One, I knew we were recording today, so I took, uh, I bought some Walmart half-calf uh, pods for, for my Keurig, which I never use, figuring Good. that'd be just enough to put it over the edge, but now I've self-diagnosed myself with ADHD. So what happened was I drank the coffee and immediately felt exhausted. Like I should just go to bed. So it's anti-coffee is what you're saying. You've Apparently. Well, they say that if you want to find out if you're ADHD is if you have a res, reverse uh, coffee thing, like coffee calms you. Like it's Ritalin is what you're saying. Ritalin only works. I took some wa- some old Roy Ritalin. <laughs> it's always carry. old Roy at Walmart. I love it. Old Roy <laughs> and brand. It, it calmed me so I almost just like slumped over while driving home and killed a family of 10. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> almost. 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 They good just times. don't realize it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't and realize it. I mean, just to be calm, I did light some incense. I decided instead of just collecting incense, like it's going to go up in value, I should burn some of it. Uh, So this flavor, it says patchouli leaves, and it smelled good in the box, but it it smells like a honey-baked ham if you were to set fire to it. Interesting. Like burnt sugar and pork. That's the flavor of this. So I don't know if it's Buddhist approved. That actually sounds for me. I'll take a burnt sugar and pork sandwich anytime. Set I mean, I don't really like all this vanilla and peach, all the baby prostitute perfume that, that the high school kids wear. I mean, <laughs> if I had a cho- choice over pork or strawberry vanilla, I guess pork's the way to do it. Pork's not bad. Pork's not bad. Now, Grant, <laughs> I, I don't know if I like the, the imagery of baby prostitute vanilla. That's oh, I should I shouldn't say that out loud in class. <laughs> I'm not uh, sure you should. I even shouldn't think scream it. across the room. I already told you not to spray your baby prostitute perfume in class. That's that's not okay. It, definitely not, and definitely not to special needs children. This is very upsetting, Aaron. <laughs> this image that you're painting. Good lord, I'm gonna call. They're somebody. not so special. They don't have a lot of needs. <laughs> you're not Just special. Bad, 
just bad taste. If it's coming it. from the Bath and Body Work, unless it's a seasonal candle, put it down. I had a student. I was very conflicted. This is a couple of years ago. The student was trying to cut in line during lunch. And the lunch lady said, what are you? You think you're special or something? And he was very upset because, yes, he does think he's special. His like his mom told says he's very special. Yes. He, and he, went, he was indignant. He was telling me, yes, I am special. How dare she kind of thing. And I'm just like sitting there going, do I tell Maybe she kid? just wanted to confirm. Right. <laughs> do you think you're special? Oh, you are. Okay, we'll go right ahead. Plus, you can order from the secret menu for only the special people. <laughs> it's, like, it's like an in out burger. But it, my question is, as a teacher... When a kid is insane, I mean, that's a ridiculous, yes, I should be able to cut in line. When a kid is insane, do what you does tell them? Do? I don't know what's, which answer is going to get me into more trouble. Do I tell the kid, you're right, you are special, cut to the front of the line, or do you say, no, you're not special, special child? I don't know what, you, what the answer is. First of all, I say, zip your jib jab and go to the back of the line. And then totally. if he, he argues his special this, I'm like, you are special. And Macari's mo mother thinks he's special. Uh, Cindy Lou Who's mom thinks she's special. They're all special. They're all special. And they all have isn't, to wait there, isn't there a Mr. Rogers song for that? There must be. Oh, no. No, that's You're your special. body special. <laughs> You're Your special. body special, and so is mine. <laughs> There's no way that was a Mr. Rogers song. Your body special, and so is mine. This is very yes. Upsetting. It's called "Don't Let Uncle Wiggly Fingers At It." That's the name of the song. Oh, oh. good lord! <laughs> but was, really, read between the lines. That Your was body a special. Interesting. It sounds anyway. better than a temple. Quit defiling your temple. Quit, de <laughs> Quit defiling your <laughs> you, temple. You dirty whore. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Anyway, good Lord. Why don't we get this train back on the tracks? And Aaron, give us your 30-second 30 se 30 synopsis of the burning sensation. <laughs> The burning sensation is what happened after a group of 20-something Jewish singles meet at a, at a summer camp for people in their late 20s, early 30s uh, until bad things happen. Somehow there are other children, but they must be watched by other people because this is just a camp, as I said, for 20, 30-year-old it's a mixer, so you can marry your own religion. It's J-Date? Is that what you're suggesting? It's J-Date. Uh, this is clearly East Coast, up in like their hot forests or whatever they do, to meet appropriate singles. Except there's like an angry guy. Maybe he got the angry itch. So he worked his way from uh, slashing a single prostitute, then decided to just, you know, Let's go back to camp. Like Rodney Dangerfield went back to college. Cropsy goes back to camp. Back and to just school. wants to kill the young people. But not that young is what you're trying to but say. But not that young. Young in comparison. Like they're too young for AARP. Not so young that, that they young. should still be hanging out at a summer camp all summer long. And quite frankly, half of them are dressed like they're going on job interviews. This was a question I had. I went I, to camp and nobody was wearing button down shirts and dockers. Did well yes, but here's here's my question to you. The idea of summer camp existed in California. See. But I remember like I'd never heard the term sleepaway camp in my life. That's got to be East Coast terminology. I think That's it's not East, California right. terminology. I went to Girl Scout camp. Right, but the, I, I think These the camps idea... I thought were like Boy Scout, Girl Scout. Um, then there were Campfire Girls. Right, they all but, had but, like a little camp. By definition, in my mind, all camp is sleepaway. All right. camp, unless is, it's a day camp. Is, is that a thing? There's day camps. There's day, day camp? camps where I live. This is where the Baptists 
come on and grab your children during the summer and offer free daycare with a dose of Jesus. And you're like, oh, thank God. I don't if care it's what free. religion. It's if free. It's, They're going to feed them. And I don't have to worry for a week. Indoctrinate away. Absolutely. Um, but so this is actually, this is based upon an actual legend that was famous in kind of the New York area. The right. legend of Cropsey. Like he's, would, he's the... The East Coast boogeyman. But I guess it's based upon a real serial killer who lived in that time, in that in that area, in like the late 70s, early 80s. And people were telling campfire stories about a real, like if we told serial killers about the Zodiac killer, like to, uh, a campfire story about the Zodiac How killer. How do we know we haven't? I went to camp and there was always the story of the dude with the hook. That's not and the Zodiac always a- killer. Well, do we know? know? We haven't caught the Zodiac He's killer. He's still out there. He's out there He's today. still out there with his hook and his gamey leg. Correct. So evidently, evidently, the filmmakers were aware of the legend that was told at campfires all over New York and turned that into this movie. That's, the, that's why the caretaker is called Cropsey, which is not a real name as far as I know, but that's the name of the legend. Correct. So there you go. So there you I go. don't know what that is. Sounds like somebody who has a crop. Maybe they were a jockey. But speaking of, of serial killers, I, I once dated someone internationally, and he said, before you start your Google searches, there is a serial killer with my exact name. And but age. he's like f- f- no, 15 years uh, older. <laughs> and social security <laughs> number. Yeah, it's it's me. And the same f- picture. Um <laughs> Here's okay. So had it's you a coincidence. ever? Just a bizarre coincidence. Had you ever seen this movie or even heard of this movie? Never heard of it. I I only know the story of Cropsy because I used to always listen to uh, my favorite murderer, and there, I remember them talking about the documentary. Correct. There was a documentary that came out a few years ago that talked about the legend and the 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 reality behind it. But there right. were certain there were certain slasher movies that came out in the early eighties that I think on some level were just kind of regional. You know what I mean? Like sleepaway camp is another one that I'd never heard of. Uh, the burning madman. These were all movies that I heard about as an adult that right. had come out in the early eighties that I think didn't make their way to Southern California, but maybe I'm, I'm mistaken, but this was one or of straight to video. You can't keep up with this shit. Well, this is before straight to video. This is before straight to video. Yeah, this is like if the movie existed, it was in theaters at this time. Is this back in the day when you had the line down the middle of your TV and the two sides were wrong, but you still watched the movie that way? (laughs) Yes, you'd be on the what the UHF or the VHF with the the bunny, and you try to get it so you can get HBO, even though your mom has canceled it. But it's like it's got like a wavy line in the center. Okay, well, newsflash. Young young boys were not trying to get HBO. We were yeah, trying to get something true. a little a little spicier. A little spicier. No the question. Spice Channel. The Skinamax. <laughs> Which I'm not even sure existed, but I'm willing to give it a chance. Um, <laughs> at least at that time. Anywho, uh-huh. I had I had this is my first viewing as well. I'd heard of it like lately within the last five years, but I, I who recommended it? No one recommended it. No one recommended it. But I okay. I travel as you know. When you become a horror podcaster, you start rubbing elbows with other horror podcasters or other social media types. And there are certain I thought you meant and up. other social misfits. I thought that's what you were going to say. And other freaks of science. Absolutely. And also- Cropsy Jr. <laughs> I met him on a cruise to Alaska. Correct. Cro- our, my good friend. <laughs> Cropsy Jr. Sounds like a Saturday morning, <laughs> Saturday morning cartoon. Um, it still could and, be. And also watching Joe Bob Briggs the last five years, he's dredging the swamp as well to finding all, all, all sorts of crazy movies. Interestingly enough, Joe Bob just had a, a marathon in August, the night marathon. And two of the movies he did in the six movie marathon are movies we've done in the last like month. It was Slumber Party Massacre was movie number one. <laughs> and movie number three was Children of the Corn. Boom. 
Great minds think alike. What can I say? He's you? draining the swamp. I wish he still wrote his column because that's really what I enjoyed. I that and his cameo in Casino. <laughs> that alone was worth the price of admission. <laughs> Absolutely. No question. Shall we jump right in to the highlights? Let's go. Let's go. How about uh, when the, when they, they're pranking old uh, Freddy Krueger with a, a skull from where and candles and worms on it? And oh, yeah, there's like a 50 gallon drum of gasoline right next to the candle. Whoops. Yeah. That's going to be the funniest prank of all. We have to talk about this. So Cropsy is the caretaker of this summer camp. I'm not sure what that means. But they yeah, talk we didn't about, have any damn caretaker. We were the caretakers. We all right, you, like, take a shit. You had camp counselors. You may have the, the camp director. You might have staff. Yeah. I don't know what the caretaker does. All right, This isn't the Overlook Hotel in the Shire. <laughs> um, but evidently, he's kind of a dick is how they describe him. He's mean to the kids. But if he's that mean, why wouldn't he be fired? If he's like, if he's physically abusive, I, I know it's 1975 or whenever this this part is supposed to take place. He's just allowed to to molest the children until they because burn him alive. Because they're probably paying him um, a dollar a dollar a day, and you can sleep on a dirty old mat in the gasoline <laughs> warehouse. He was yes, <laughs> he he's sleeping in ostensibly the tool shed where there are huge drums of just gasoline. And their plan, the the disgruntled camp goers, it's hard to know who's a counselor and who's, you know, a kid because they're all they all look the same goddamn age. So it's hard to know. But their plan is we're going to prank him. And it's not we're going to lie to bag of shit (laughs) in front of his door circa can't buy me love. No, no, no. They go and find a skull, a human skull. We don't know where from. I mean, are they I grave assume robbers? the next lake over, Cap Crystal Lake. That would make a hell of a lot more sense. They put the <laughs> the the bloody skull in his next to his bed with with candles and worms and all sorts of shit. And they wake up Cropsy, who already looks kind of jacked. He looks a little slothy. Yeah, from the goonies. He's seen some things from He's from jump. Things. Right, he looks borderline from jump. He sees the burning skull and rather than running from the room, he grabs it and dumps it on his, on his mattress, which has been <laughs> dipped in turpentine or something. Cause it immediately goes up in flames. He's in flames. Right. Yeah, totally. And the kids are like, Oh damn, we should go get him. But of course he is literally, he is in an incinerator at this stage of the game. The whole place has gone up. Literally, they just watched him run on fire into the lake, and they're like, dude, we got to get out of here. If it was now time, they would just be recording it and posting it on the TikTok. But it was confusing to me, because traditional horror movies that have this kind of setup, like the body, like, and we never saw him again. You know what I mean? It's like he runs, Uh falls into the swamp. Five years later, he rises from the swamp. But that's not what happens in this movie. In this movie, it is smash cut to there's an ambulance taking him to the emergency. We basically go through his like physical therapy. I mean, we see Cropsy recovering from his wounds, I guess. We have people actually having full conversations with him. Yes. He's so burned. He's caked. And then like some free, there are all these voices the skin graph isn't taking. So what does that mean? That he's just like muscle? He looks like one of yeah. those uh, Open anatomy wounds. models. Correct. And 100%. then they're discussing, you can't be angry with the children. It was an accident. This yeah, is all right. voiceover. Five years right. later, he's being re- released from the burn unit, I guess, uh, at the local hospital. And they're so voiceover. burned, he's cooked. That's what they said. Well, because what was I it? I can't an read orderly, my own handwriting. An orderly brings some dude, like his first day, a young internist, doctor, first day on the job. You got to check this shit out. Drags him in there to say, look at this. You're, you will never forget the day you saw this freak. And then, of course, you see the hand come out. Cropsy's hand would literally just opened like wounds it's like 
We have no bandages. You we can't have no do anything. Bandages, and God forbid you're you're in the burn unit all the time. God forbid a, a nurse or orderly has ever been touched by a patient. It yes. was like it was like he'd flown out, fallen out of the ceiling, and you had no idea he was there. Ah! Ah! Oh my God! Did anyone really? come in uh, after the screaming started? Well, Cropsy should have been the one screaming because he has exactly. burns all over his entire body, and he can obviously talk because they're having conversations with him. Right. You need to forgive and forget, Cropsy. I'd be like, get the f- out of my room, jackass! <laughs> Leave me alone. What was funny is the hand comes out, grabs the orderly. The orderly goes, "Oh shit." The doctor just goes like, I'm out, deuces. He just walks out the door. Leaves. Like, Who knows later. what happens there? Good He's Lord. like, I'm going to become a podiatrist. I'm I, out. I, I, I am out of this shit. <laughs> Smash cut to five years later. Cropsy's like wearing like a, a trench coat and like a fedora. He's like the invisible man. He's got like a scarf wrapped around him and big old goggles. Uh and he's he's cruising for hookers. All right. So where did old beef jerky go shopping for all this? Did he have all this while he was laying in his own filth up at the camp? Unclear. Because now he spent about I don't know three hundred dollars in nineteen seventies money on a whole fedora. He's the Invisible Man. You're right. Right. It's Claude Rains under there. If we pick Le- the scabs, Claude Rains will appear. <laughs> Leather isotoner gloves on. I mean, every ounce. Only of the body. finest. <laughs> no question. No question. You're a goddamn bird victim. How are you planning on hooking up with this hooker who, frankly, looked like a real hooker? This was not Julia Roberts. This was right? like, hey, lady, we're going to shoot this extra scene. How about $20? Absolutely. Dude, that Absolutely. looked real. I started having real good vibes uh, for this movie. It looked super jalo at that moment. It did. With all, all the blood running out. I'm like, okay, I'm yes. setting up. So they they hired. Her. I mean, she's probably a very nice lady. Probably teaching drama in Connecticut or something. But for sure, in 1981, she looked. That was like some realistic prostitution. If That's I, right. Not that I know. In my, well, clearly, in, she was a method actor, and for yes. this role, she lived on the streets for six months, turning tricks just to yes. get the right vibe. Just to get the vibe. This is the Stanislavski method. He'll tell you. That's how you do it. <laughs> Lee Strasberg. Um, anywho, she <laughs> she invites him up to her apartment. Is that what the hookers do? Here's where I live. Why don't we go up to my why don't we go up to my place? Is that well, how you know? She's getting older. She's not as flexible. I mean, for the young ones, uh, giving a BJ in, in a urine filled alley it could be exciting. But you know, your knees start hurting, your back starts hurting. That is true. They don't talk about the knees to hurt when you. She's you're... got the the craftmatic adjustable BJ chair. You know, she does. You got to do it. You got to do what you got to do. So she invites him up to the room. He immediately is like turning off the lights, which I thought was considerate, right? If you're a horrible freak, let's let's dim the lights a little bit. And then she turns and's like, oh my God, just get out of here. But when they show him, he's still wearing the goggles and the scarf and shit. I mean, what was it, B.O.? What was the issue at that stage of the game? Well, it's true. Unless they were teaching him hygiene, it could be that he's been wearing that stink, stank, stank uh, outfit. But stink, she was three stank, sheets. So I'm not sure she could tell. Right. Can't be. He can't be too choosy at that stage of the game. But who knows? But he so he murders he's her. angry at her because she burned him, or he's just now going to kill anyone who speaks to him. Now this is a question. Or is near him. <laughs> this this is the question. Because when you set up these kind of revenge movies, right? Then right. presumably, presumably, he should be only killing those kids in the window who caused the, the ruckus, right? Indeed. But when you deal with these kind of slasher films, motivations usually go right out the window, right? So are we assuming now he walked there? Because he yes. doesn't seem like he would have a car. So after he killed her, he took a nap and then walked out of New York and went up to upstate New York to wherever this camp is. That that's camp Dog Star, whatever the F. It was it was camp it was Camp Dog Star. 
Keanu Reeves performs there every night. But uh, you're right. He was he was in the city. I mean, I don't know if this is New York City, if this is Manhattan Island. I'm not sure. But he this walks. New York ish. No question. He walks from the city proper into the forest where people are like, we can't even get here unless we're on by canoe. Unless we travel by water or helicopter, it is impossible to leave this camping area. So I'm not sure how it works. Do you think that he's some kind of a, a, this is a Marvel Universe situation? Yes, he's a mutant. That he gains secret powers from his open wounds from a polluted lake. This <laughs> is a prophecy. X-Man. He's, he's a X-Man. different kind of X-Man where you're just ears and things slough off. <laughs> clearly. <laughs> clearly. So this is actually a different camp. This isn't Camp Blackfoot. This is Camp something else. From across the the thing now, there's well, a grand. So, because aren't the Blackfoots in the Dakota Territory? We're way off then. That's true. That's true. I'm not sure they were concerned about such things. <laughs> the writers of this movie, including Harvey Weinstein, not too concerned. Um, I think this is autobiographical. It could be. Could be. Now there was a grand reveal later in the movie that Todd, who I guess is one of the counselors. I yes. guess is one of the counselors five years earlier was at the other camp and was in fact, one of the kids who participated in the, um, the prank against poor, poor freakish Cropsy. So that's why wow. he's here, I guess. Right. I think it's coincidence. He's the only one left. Is that it? No, the other kids get out he went free. To kill everybody else. What? Well, it's funny. Cause he, it's, this movie was kind of upsetting, honestly, in, in the sense that there were multiple scenes of women kind of being pressured into sex that they didn't want and were not going to enjoy. No, and the first <laughs> this was camp rapes a lot. Absolutely. It was absolutely the, the first oh, and the filming, this, especially now that you know it's, it's Harvey Weinstein, the first girl who is murdered at the camp, you see her full frontal nudity multiple times. And I got the, the sense just watching her that she was not uh, entirely comfortable to be giving you full frontal in this mm-hmm. movie. Mm-hmm. So, and then to have her, like, so she's full frontal going into the water, her guy that she kind of likes, but also kind of scares her, which <laughs> Yeah, I which think. is a good sign. Yes. I'm so disturbed by my boyfriend that I don't want to go to the overnight camp. But the counselors told me I could leave if I wanted to. Why don't you break up with him? Because I kind of like him. Steve. I kind of like him. But I kind of, well, not even a boyfriend, like a flirtation. Like, yes. like somebody that they're kind of. He's terrifying. Yeah, That's he's definitely. Weird. The camp is all Harvey Weinstein. It is. Yes. There are two rapey McRaperson, one more extreme than the other. Yes. Then there's the character who I'm sure is Harvey Weinstein, the dude from uh, Fast Times. Fast Times at Richmond High, yes. who's like a voyeur. So he's like sneaking into showers to watch girls. He's always in the bushes watching people. It's super creepy. So we assume that is, in fact, Harvey Weinstein at Jewish sleepaway camp. No, th- that it, it's. <laughs> I think his name was Mark Ratner from uh, uh, Fast Times. The guy who worked yes. at the ticket uh, at the, the movie theater. The main dude. One of the main dudes. And he's arguably one of the main dudes in this one. But it's like you said, it's like he we introduced to his character because there's a girl taking a shower in one of the camp showers. In and, the girl's shower. In the girl's shower. And we hear her scream and she says, Alfred, which is his name, he busted in here, was looking at me, and wouldn't leave. That's yeah. how we meet him. Later in the movie, after a few deaths, the one kind of bully, rapey guy had finished having unsatisfying sex with his girlfriend. He goes back to get firewood. And it wasn't sit- even his girlfriend. He's, he'd been sniffing around to everyone yes. looking for a hookup. Correct. Well, they had they he had insults kind of his love making, and he's still coming back for more. Correct. She says, "Maybe I'll give you a second chance." 
he goes to to make a fire so he goes to get firewood and matches or whatever and alfred sees this this is glazer now stealing the the stuff or not stealing but getting the firewood stuff he creeps behind him literally a foot and a half behind him so i don't know if he's trying to be creepy but ostensibly he's going back to watch them have sex is that what he's doing and yes. that's when the mur- a few more murders occur. And Good all break. the guys defend him. Correct. Well, not all the guys. Not well, Glazer for, wants to kick his ass. Glazer wants to bully. kick his ass. The rest of them want to defend him. And he's clearly a fucking peeping Tom creeper. He's, he's a creep. He's a creep. And I guess Todd, the head counselor, I guess his attitude is like, look, He's a weird little dude. He just needs to make some weird friends. Little, he's like 28 years old. But that's the problem. Jason Alexander is one of the campers. I mean, he's yes, th- that's he what looks, I mean. He looks I have like to say, he George. looks great. Jason yes. Alexander never looked so great in his whole life. Full head of hair. Full head of hair. Trim. <laughs> well, tr- trim-ish, right? He looks like Jason Alexander. There are many moments he's almost going to take his shirt off, but then he puts it back down. But then does not, thankfully. Thankfully. So the campers start dropping like flies. Well, okay, we have to set this up. So there's the camp, but then there's the older campers will go on a three-day canoe camping trip with very little adult supervision. Because it's hard to know, are the counselors supposed to be adults or just older kids or what because everyone looks the same goddamn age so it's hard to know what's happening jump in yeah <laughs> yeah no that's yes. what i said it, it is clearly a mixer to go find the person for you to get marriage you know to keep the faith together Could these be. people are way too old they're clearly not counselors because they are never with children even when they claim to be with with campers the campers are their age right Right. Well, I, so I it think, makes no goddamn sense. I think Todd and his girlfriend are supposed to be the counselors, and everybody else are supposed to be campers. Is what I think. But it's hard. So to tell. George Costanza, mother, yes. put him on a bus for camp. Is that what I'm hearing correctly? That's, yes, correct. <laughs> he drove his Trans Am to camp. Well, and the other thing I, I found is that. In my research, I discovered that the guy who plays Glazer, who's the pseudo muscly kind of bully guy, right. is in fact older than the the counselors. Oh, so he's supposed sure. to be a camper, but he is in fact older. Than- so this is the craziest shit. It's hard to know. Look, what the, the age that you typically go to camp, and you can correct me, is usually like maybe through middle school. No, no, I went in high school, I think. Did no, you? maybe it was middle school. They have it for high school, but you're kind of, once you get to that age, you are like a counselor in training because the actual counselors were people in college. Right. You, when you're a counselor, you're getting paid. Right. I'm coming, it's not a volunteer thing. I'm coming here, you're paying me to spend time with these, to, to babysit these kids. That's the idea, okay? Yeah. So, but I, I figure when, by the time you get to high school, you should be like, I, I don't, you don't have to ship me off somewhere. So, because you're at work all day and I'm going to be home smoking meth or something. Right. I think it's a fun thing. I think it's like, I mean, in California, you got the nature all around you. When you live in the big city, I think you have like, they like, okay, ba- this whole thing's going to be based on Seinfeld. Camp buddies, you go that you see every year. No, and it's like a little fun adventure. Get out of the hot city, right? And I wonder, I wonder if it is much more of an East Coast kind of thing, where it's like every year you go to the same camp, and maybe you go for a month or something. Maybe you go for the summer. I have no idea what these people are doing. Yeah, we would. What we would do is we might go for a week. We might go for a week, maybe end of yeah. July, beginning of August, and then that's it. And maybe you go to the same camp. Maybe you don't. Any friends you made that week, you would never, ever see again. Never again. <laughs> that, was, that was the end of the friendship. Yeah. I went so. to Camp Nawakwa, and I can't remember the name. 
of the other camp I went to. I went to Pathfinder Ranch through the the boys club like you signed okay. up at the boys club and they i don't know if they had a connection with the pathfinder ranch or whatever is that for but, like the troubled teens it like, sounds like it would be bull, or it sounds bulldogs like and parolees or right or it's yes to my knowledge none of that was true but who's to say who's to say so anyway the massacres begin cropsy is out killing people and there's a particularly interesting scene where What's her name? Karen, who was almost date raped by her creepy flirtation. She's murdered. And the next morning she doesn't show up again. So they think she paddled away back to camp, but took all the canoes with her or didn't know what she was doing and let all the canoes go. Some kind The of water was still. This wasn't like they were right. on the ocean. Where, where are they going to float to? Right. It's not it's white not... water rafting. It's, it was like glass still. Correct. Correct. It's 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 not the Colorado River, but whatever <laughs> the case may be. So now we're we're amping up the the drama because now they're kind of trapped. At one point, somebody goes, "Why don't we just walk back? Do you see how thick that forest is? We can't possibly." Where are they? Do the that. Amazon? Could be right. I, they I don't a, know about you, but our please. camp was not like miles from civilization. No. It was like right down the road from Hemet or something. (laughs) Well, I mean, it's in the mountains. Uh, The camp I went to was in the mountains. Did you have to be helicoptered in? Were were there villagers? No, they (laughs) parachuted in. Right, like commandos behind enemy lines. And then it was just parkour across the top of the trees. You did, absolutely. So they, rather than risk walking through the forest, because again, the question is, it's impossible to reach by land unless you're Cropsy. Because Cropsy, horrendous burn victim. And imagine going through a dense forest just with normal skin. Ow! That would kind of hurt a little bit. Now imagine doing that where you're just an open wound, wandering through the forest, getting hit by pine what needles. About all the scar tissue. I'm assuming you got like chicken front arms. You you don't have the flexibility and stretch if you're burned down to the muscle on every inch of your body. Well, and the other thing is when they showed it's like Cropsey, very athletic work. It, you're absolutely right. When they showed Cropsey earlier, he did not seem like some gigantic behemoth. No, he just seemed like a normal dude. But evidently, with with the <laughs> <laughs> with all the surgery he had, they 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 added some uh, you know optional things to his body. They turned him to a cyborg or some sort. Now he's superhumanly huge and superhumanly strong. So that's good. That's helpful. They gave him some some of the monkey shine serum into him and turned him into a, <laughs> a monkey shine. Serum. Made him made him much stronger. I don't know. <laughs> and he went on, and he's in the Ethernet, and now he lives entirely on X. Absolutely. So they <laughs> it's they, Elon Musk. <laughs> they fashion a a raft using just driftwood evidently because there's no there's no evidence that they're chopping down trees or any shit unless i missed it did you see anything like that it was just gathering I see the, the, the felon of the trees but apparently this was a very great camp because they were able to whip that together and put like 12 people on it and they did boom they said they said paddle back and why don't they just out. make two and then we just all leave <laughs> impossible there's only so much driftwood to be found, evidently. <laughs> um, and this revealed the most bizarre and outlandish moment where they're paddling the five, I don't know how old they're supposed to be, 20 year olds, paddling back towards the camp and they see the lone canoe. Oh, there's a canoe. We should just get on there. And as they get close, Cropsy was evidently waiting in the canoe on the off chance that they decided to paddle. <laughs> On the off chance, they decided to build a raft and then paddle hours because they're exhausted. Uh, It's like they've been out out to sea for six months. They paddle. Shut the f*** off. I'm going to leave you on the shore. I have no tolerance. So Cropsy was laying in wait in this canoe, jumps up (laughs) with some shears that he had with him, just starts 
just starts. It's you know, ridiculous. Oh, There's like God. 15 people and they all just sat there in line waiting to be individually. I mean, you could have rolled off into the water. Let's see if Cropsy can swim after you. Is he standing in the canoe? He's standing in the canoe and is managing to stab everyone from the canoe, as far as I could tell. Yes, correct. He has, like, I don't know, like a, the, the reach of a condor. I don't know if his yes. arms stretch out so he could reach all the way across or what's happening. Well, but everybody a... waited patiently <laughs> waited until they turn. could be murdered. Correct. I, I like the scene <laughs> where young Fisher Stevens is standing there with his hand, his fake plasticky hand. Going, <laughs> oh, it's Cropsy. And then you see the slow motion of the, the shears just snip his fingers. Ah! So poor Fisher Stevens. It's a sad situation. I love Fisher Stevens. I have to tell you, he always brings his best. Fisher, there was a period in the mid 80s. You could not throw a rock without hitting Fisher Stevens at least Dude, once. he at was in twice. everything. He was in one of my favorite movies, Reversal of Fortune. I've seen he that was. movie 10,000 times. He was in every f***ing thing. He, he, he was, was always solid. He was everywhere. I don't want to go his entire IMDb. But, but he we was should. In, he was in My Science Project, if you remember that one. He no. was in The Flamingo Kid with no. Matt Dillon. He, he was always kind it. of the wise cracking buddy. It was right. his job. He and it, what he did, he did well. That's all I'm saying. Fisher Stevens. Agreed. Agreed. You know his real name is Stephen Fisher. I did because last night I was googling all his business. <laughs> I didn't know that. Evidently, there was already multiple Steve, Stephen, Stevo Fishers that were part of the union. So he had to go. He flipped it and became Fisher Stevens. The old so switcheroo. Ye old switcheroo. So all those dudes wiped out. Very upsetting. Which is, it's kind of a good idea, because then, in the sense, the other campers who are still waiting think that we just have to wait and help is on the way. But they, they are not. Help is not on the way. That's help is not on the way. Um, another notable death that I found kind of fascinating was the horrible sex scene uh, between Glazer and his girl, his girl, his gal pal, whatever she was, uh, Sally. Where you hear, I, and I, the way I do it is I have the, the subtitles on there, right? Oh, so no. where it's, because it's panning over through the forest and it's a lot of grunting and, oh, hang on, wait a second. Whoa, slow down. Oh, uh, grunt. It was not a pretty picture. It didn't sound that was very romantic. He was like, is this it? I thought for sure it was going to be one of those serial killer things. Right. Would be a sassy woman, but she's like, no. Nah. Not not good enough. She said, not good enough, damn it. Is that it? Right. If a woman yeah, ever is says, that is it? that it? That means she don't good. give a damn. Right. That's not that's not gonna raise your confidence. That's not gonna that's not gonna get the job done. That's whoosh. That's right. Only thing give it is a three. <laughs> the only thing worse hard. is if they say, Have you started yet? That's worse. <laughs> but is that it? That's a bad one. But she, so she is killed by, when he leaves to get the firewood, she's killed by Cropsy. He just pops up and murders her. When Glazer comes back, he sees like the, the, the sleeping bag is kind of pulled up, up to her face. Hey, honey, what are you doing? Uh, how are you sleeping? And he pulls the sleeping bag back. And then immediately the shears come up and skewer him. And he's being Which is ridiculous. You didn't notice the sleeping bag is stretched so because there's now there's like an old dude in a fedora <laughs> right. under there. This isn't Freddy Krueger coming in the dreams. This is supposed to be like, I don't notice that my 90 pound girlfriend is now suddenly this huge mass. Correct. Like you would, it, this is one of those scenes that drives me crazy where it's like, this is meant to fool the audience but would not fool actual people who were there. Right. right? That's why they only showed an inch of the sleeping bag. So, Cause otherwise there's no way they were going to hide, hide that. Right. Cause I was like, where did the knife come from? And then I was like, what? Right. It made absolutely no sense. You're telling me a six foot five, <laughs> 300 pound old prospector 
was hiding <laughs> under the sleeping bag with your girlfriend that and was you didn't an old fucking notice? <laughs> Is that what you're saying, telling me? Sweet Jesus. Because you're right. And again... This guy is the big bully. The muscly bully is literally almost laying on top of her, moving the sleeping bag. Hey, Sally, are you sleeping? And then the shears come out and picks him up and carry and skewers him to a tree. Yeah. He's an X-Men, I told you. We'll He's find out. It's all part of the Marvel Universe. It'll be right. part of the next uh, Deadpool. <laughs> But what's what's funny about this is how many times somebody keeps coming back to this area and getting killed. So Sally's there asleep, gets killed. Glazer comes back, is killed. Frickin' Alfred, who witnesses the second murder, runs back, gets Todd. Todd, you got to see this shit. Todd goes, there. oh my God, there is some murders. Cropsy comes out again. He's like, I'm just chilling. Just keep bringing them to me. I don't even have to get off my couch. But, of course, Todd doesn't get killed. He just gets a little scratch. And they just left him. Everybody else is nailed to a tree like Jesus. Uh, He has a little nick on his ear and he's left to be. Correct. Correct. Now, there are people who survive. (laughs) Because the whole camp gets on the, the raft, which is drifted back, and they're just slice and dice corpses on it. They just kind of push the bodies out of the way, I guess. Everybody's very shad. And they, everyone else like, let us get on the, the raft. Don't you think you'd be afraid? The last people who got on this raft were murdered. Now we're getting on the raft? Well, clearly they're not very smart. But well. they do know that someone's slicing and dicing on the land. So maybe they think this is their chance. This is their chance. Now they leave Todd behind. The head Which counselor. makes no sense. Oh, because he's got to find Jackass Joe or whatever. Correct. The only reason I remember Alfred's name is because in the final 10 minutes of this movie, Todd says it uh, no less than 400 times. <laughs> Alfred? Alfred? Is that you, Alfred? And I always love the kind of quiet, like, shout, Hey, Alfred! That doesn't... I realize, watch this, it makes no goddamn sense because you don't know where anybody is. So yeah. you know, you either have to be in the woods. You either have to be absolutely silent and don't call anybody's name, or just shout it to the wind. Because who gives a shit? Cropsy could be there. Alfred could be there. You have a 50-50 chance of running into anybody anyway. So and Cropsy don't gives a damn. Cropsy don't gives a. And of course, <laughs> Cropsy's lair at this point is for some reason there's an old mining colony. In the middle of the forest. I was trying to figure out where, what the F this whole place was. Correct. The, the end is so bizarre. So they, they he captures young Harvey Weinstein. Yes. But he doesn't kill him. He Correct. ties him up. Something he hasn't done with anybody else. Everybody else he chops up immediately. That's why Correct. I thought there was going to be a big reveal where he's like, Luke, I am your father. It's me. <laughs> It's me, it's, your brother. My brother it's was da- always It's Cropsey. Daddy Cropsy. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy Cropsy. Well, you you wanted Todd to be like, actually, my last name's Cropsy. Womp womp womp. <laughs> he was my father all along. I was too ashamed. See, we're we're writing we're right rewriting the ending. It's perfect, dude. It'd be like the first Jason, where he's getting revenge for his estranged father. Right. And as I'm sitting here thinking about this, he has an opportunity to kill Todd at that moment. And he's the only one who was there when he was horribly burned and he does not take it. Maybe this is an unreliable narrator and everything we're witnessing is simply told by the murderer. I mean, do you mean the director is the unreliable narrator? Is that uh, that I can get behind? Whoever Sweet lives. Jesus. Did Alfred live? I can't even remember. Did the dude from Fast yes. Times live? Yes, he lived. Yeah. Peepin' Tom, skeezy Harvey Weinstein's, uh, you know, avatar. He He's survived. the one who lives to tell the tale. Well, Todd survives so, too. They both survive. Oh, shit. Well, that, Todd should have died. Along very with very attractive, though. He's a handsome devil. Along with the other, like, nine kids, who, including Jason Alexander, who get on the raft. They make it back to camp and everything's cool. So Right. I liked our idea. I want it to be Harvey Weinstein was really working to avenge his father. Yep. 
That makes sense. And his father will be revealed to be the creepy dude from uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. <laughs> In the wheelchair, the old grandpa. The old grandpa. But crispier. Like his skin is like KFC extra crispy. Egg, or Don't you always say, give me extra crispy? Who the says, extra crispy. give me the regular crispy? Someone goes up crisp. to his forehead and just peels a little off. That's what I want. But my question is, <laughs> does anybody ever say, can you make this Kentucky Fried Chicken less crispy? Is there a well, song? Well, you have option? the original recipe, which actually is a different flavor. So is that the issue? It's two different flavors? It's two I different it was flavors. Crisp Extra levels. crispy does not taste like original recipe. Interesting. Well, not that I would know. I haven't done the Pepsi challenge with a different, hmm, what's the difference? No, no one even knows what the Pepsi challenge is these days. No. Anywho. No one knows. Any last thoughts about The Burning, which is the shittiest title, by the way? Uh, yeah, my my thing is Cropsy's been able to dispatch everyone. Yes. At the end of the movie, suddenly he's a bumbling idiot and it can't even do anything. And these right. two uh, Nimrods take him over with like little effort, no effort whatsoever. It's Correct. like, we just got to wrap it up. So let's make him an idiot. Boom. <laughs> make him a bumbling imbecile. Absolutely. <laughs> Good Lord. I mean, I, I think at one point they were talking about having a sequel of the burning because he gets burned again, but he took a freaking he took, he took a hatchet to his forehead. It went through his head. He's not coming back from this unless there's some supernatural shit. I don't know. Which there <laughs> always is. There always is. It can't, Th that's a, I, I mean, how, what, what did they do to Michael Myers? And then, uh, you know, they cut him up into a million pieces. They put him through a chipper shredder. So he's just a goo. And then they turn around and look back and the goo's gone. That's true. That was that was chapter four, I believe, of, uh, <laughs> of Halloween or whatever. Sweet Jesus. Shall we go behind the scenes? For God's Don't sake. to do it. We're like, we're an hour into this. And we we're just now <laughs> getting into behind the scenes. Oh, sweet Jesus. Uh, I said this before, the concept of the film originally scripted as The Cropsy Maniac is based on a, a campfire story told at summer camps in and around New Jersey and upstate New York. Okay. The story is still in circulation to this day. So there you go. People still talk about it. Um, Tom Savini did all of the uh, special effects, all the murder scene uh, gags for this movie. And oh, did he come up with that shitty mask for Cropsy? The, well, he said he created the mask like in an afternoon. So, you know, take and it that shows. what you will. But <laughs> I'll tell you what, the the actual murder, like the stabbings and things, looked yeah. pretty rough to me. That, <laughs> that, that was good. It, had, it, has, stuff. it was very giallo. I like that. But it the was. mask was bullshit. He Let's not brag about it. All right. No, 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 no. He uh he turned down working on Friday the 13th part 2 to work on this. Hmm, um, that doesn't seem like a good choice. Probably not the best choice. Now he says he did that for a couple of reasons. Number 1, he didn't understand how Jason is now alive and adult and on the rampage in the second one. That didn't make any matter. sense to him. And But this made sense. Furthermore, he liked the script better of the bird. All right. Boom. Uh, the film's composer was originally offered a percentage of whatever profits the film made, but he decided to opt in for a fee as he thought the film had no he, chance of being successful. He, he opted in for money, cash money. Just give front. me some money. However, the film ended up being the biggest grossing horror movie in Japan. So <laughs> even though, even though hey. it sucked in the U.S., and made a lot of money in Japan. So what are you going to do? All right. Big in Japan. Big in Big Japan. In Japan. Tom Big Savini in Japan. was not particularly happy with Cropsy's burn makeup as he was given only three days to work on it. Womp womp. Hmm. Um, the wardrobe of the film is mostly the actual wardrobe of the cast. Makes sense. It is very Sears catalog of the time. <laughs> In an interview with Total Film Magazine, Holly Hunter had the following to say about her screen debut. Which one was Holly Hunter? She was called Sophia 
and she had zero lines. They referred which, to her. What, a couple which times. death did she have? Did not have a death. Was not killed. Oh, she's just rando in the background. Rando in the background. All right. And she said, well, look, I got paid more than I ever could have imagined on the burning. I was making over $1,000 a week, which was incredible. I could make my rent. I didn't have to wait tables for a while. I got all these new friends, and I was kind of a glorified extra. And I got my Screen Actors Guild card, so it was fantastic. Hey, right on. I kept waiting for to hear that twangy voice, so that's how I missed her. And that might have been why she didn't have any lines. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, because it's supposed to be like New York, New Jersey, and there's Holly Hunter with her crazy accent. Well, people do live in the area, like when they move from other areas. Not like true. in California. Not, not true, true at, all. at all. It's not allowed. Um, actors had trouble holding the garden shears to the liking of the director. So in a lot of the scenes. Yeah, because it's in a no, it's a total nonsense way of killing someone. Ah, ah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so the director played the killer himself most of the time. So Only I could do it correctly. Only I could do it. These um, fools. Fools! Let's see. Feature film debut of Jason Alexander, Fisher Stevens, and Holly Hunter. Jason Alexander would make very few returns to the horror genre after this. And this is Holly Hunter's only ever appearance in a horror production, despite her appearance in a thriller about killers, Copycat, if you remember that one. Maybe. So. Now, and we, did we discuss that Fisher Stevens was once married to Michelle Pfeiffer? Uh, I think you've mentioned that on a few occasions. All right. So there you go. Fisher Stevens doing his thing. I think that's uh, all that we need to know. We talked about the actor. that's plenty. Right. The actor who played Glazer was actually older than the counselors, which we talked about. So such is life. Let's it was talk- like the casting of Greece where everybody's 40, but they're in high school. Right. So all the teachers had to be 70. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's talk about the cast and crew. Uh, I Brian thought that's Math- what we were doing. No, we were doing behind the scenes. <laughs> this is different. Brian Matthews played Todd. He's known for The Burning. He was in one episode of Hull High in 1990. I don't even know what that is. Never heard of it. He was in one episode of Riptide in 1986. I have heard of that. That's where heard, I've heard of it. Never private, seen it. Private detectives who live in a boat, something along those lines. And he was in 10 episodes as Brother Francis on Days of Our Lives from 1985 to 1986. Like sands through the hourglass. Lee Ayers played Michelle. She was the uh, like female camp counselor. Most famously, I recognized her immediately. She was in Bloodsport with Jean-Claude Van Damme in 1988. Bless her. Uh, she was the uh, uh, reporter trying to get behind the scenes in the Bloodsport, which they didn't want reporters there. So there you go. Because she, <laughs> she was in uh, The Burning in 1981. She was in something called Eddie Macon's Run in 1983. Hmm. And... She was Nurse Capo Bianco in All That Jazz in 1987. Or 1979, I should say. There you go. I love All That Jazz. And the one thing about this film is the women were all nice to each other. Usually in these man productions, there's always like the bitchy one, and I'm going to sleep with your boyfriend one. They were all just nice. The girls were The men were trash. The guys were horrible. All sorts it, 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 of rapey McRapersons. Yes. Uh, Brian Backer played Alfred, the peeping Tom. You know him from Mark Rat Ratner in Fast Times Richmond High in 1982, a year later. He was the doctor in uh, Loser in 2000. Yeah, how did he get Fast Times at Richmond High, which was iconic at the Absolutely. time, from this? I can't answer that question. All right, continue on. Continue on. In 1987, he was in Police Academy 4, Citizens on Patrol. This movie is famous because it's the last one with Steve Gutenberg. And yet they made about four more after that. What is the Goot doing these days? Community theater, I don't know. (laughs) Uh, And then, of course, in 1981, he was in The Burning. Uh, Let's see. 
Jason Alexander played Dave, the comic relief, I guess. Um, you know him from 172 episodes as George Costanza in Seinfeld. 100%. He was in, he was the voice of Hugo in The Hunchback of Notre Dame in 1996. I think that's the Disney. Really, movie. beyond this, no one cares. He was Philip Stuckey in Pretty Woman in 1990. True. Do you remember that? Yeah. Which is a very upsetting role when you go back and watch it today, where he's smacking I've around I've only seen Julie part Roberts. of it once. What? It's not really my type of film. You haven't seen Pretty Woman? Not all the way through. You're out of your goddamn mind. I have a hatred of Julia Roberts. I clearly. I think she's a monster. Uh, that's excessive. <laughs> And he was in 1993, he was in Coneheads. Oh, God, that was such a terrible movie. Horrible. But I did have the soundtrack. I think it was another one of those Columbia House things. But I had the soundtrack on CD because it had, like, some good music. I don't believe you. Fisher Stevens played Woodstock. The the He was arguably the youngest. Like, he actually looked kind of young compared to the other actors in this. Still not young enough to be a camp camp a camper. <laughs> he was he was in the he, he had the problematic role of Ben Javeri in Short Circuit and Short Circuit 2. If you don't remember that, he played like I never saw it. Stereotypical like uh Indian where he was doing Ooh. oh yes with Steve Gutenberg. So Go watch Short Circuit, but then cringe at the white guy playing the Indian role. Uh, he was in Hackers in 1995 as the Plague. Oh, I and think I saw that back in the day. He was Iggy Koopa in 1993's Super Mario Brothers. Good Lord. Oh, By the 90s, there are some stinkers in the, in the resume for old uh, Fisher Stevens. Just go watch Reversal of Fortune, and you can thank me later. Holly Hunter played Sophie. She says a glorified extra. I mean, she's basically an extra. Yeah. Uh, you know her for Broadcast News in 1987. Raising uh, Arizona. Absolutely. The Piano in 1993. That was disturbing. 13 in 2003, which is very disturbing. I refuse and to watch it. The Incredibles 2. She was Elastigirl. I think so. I saw the first one. All sorts of good stuff. The first one was actually quite good. The other one, not, not so, so much. much. Shall we go look at the ratings? Let's go. The Burning, currently 77 on the tomato meter. But before you freak out, there are no top critics. So these are 13 rando critics. All right. What are the, the top tournament? rando people? Aaron well, Doherty from the podcast that wouldn't die says <laughs> pretty much. What do you think the uh, fans gave the burning? Uh, 78. That is interesting. It is not 78. It is 60%. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to read all these dudes, uh, but let me just go. Alan Jones from starburst. I cannot, I don't know who that is or what they're doing. Says, Someone who works at the Starburst factory. The burning has some shock value if you're prepared to fall for all the well-worn tricks of the trade and put out of your mind ever, every film you've seen in the last three years. <laughs> so good to know. Now, one thing I want to mention about this movie is there was another film that, came, that was going to come out also talking about the Cropsey legend and it was called Mad Men, or not Mad Men, Mad Man. <laughs> Mad Men is something else. Mad Man. And I was like, really? To, they had to rewrite uh, the script so it did not reference Cropsey at all. Because this movie actually came out just before that. Also, also, this movie was written and put into development before Friday the 13th. So this was meant to be more of a Halloween um texas chainsaw kind of thing now it wasn't made until after those movies uh until after friday the 13th but the idea was from before that so something to be aware of okay there now i'm it. aware thank you aaron what is your rating 
for the burning sensation. Now, this may surprise you with all the rapey McRaperson. I just think it is s- bizarre. Yes. Makes no sense. True. And yet I kind of liked it a little bit. Boom! Now that's a, that's an M. Night Shyamalan twist. What is your no, rating? There's a twist. I am going to give it... Uh, Three consecutive life sentences to Harvey Weinstein out of five. <laughs> Reconvicted, by the way. Yeah. So, three. That is actually a shocking, a shocking review coming from you. How about you. that? Um, shocking, I know. I think this movie's kind of stupid and unforgettable. <laughs> or stupid and forgettable, I should say. <laughs> uh it's i mean i've definitely seen worse it's not a snuff film uh it's not a homemade it is not a film uh i'm gonna give it 2.5 stars out of five um i'm not sure i ever need to see it again in i am shocked by this i thought you were gonna tell me this is your boyhood uh favorite Never seen it before. Well, the main reason why I wanted to see it is because I knew it was the first film of Jason Alexander, Holly Hunter, and uh, Fisher Stevens. I thought that's kind of that's kind of fun trivia to yeah. see them young and, and in this. But it's look, it's not. I mean, it's not so. meatballs with. Uh... You know what? I'm gonna say something. <laughs> Here's the thing about meatballs. I know people that that swear by meatballs. They go, Bill Murray at his finest is meatballs. I think meatballs sucks. Boom. Well, the problem is it didn't age well. At the time, I mean, I was a CIT and it was nothing like meatballs. And I remember going to a, a camp out with other uh, CITs, counselors and trainees from a yes. different camp. And we all looked at each other. We we're like, we thought it was going to be like meatballs. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I love Bill Murray. I love, love him. him. I'm love bringing him, him to love Thanksgiving him. next year. Ghostbusters is one of my favorite movies ever. And it is largely because of him. Because of his lines, his delivery. Um, meatballs blows. Not to mention just because here's a 35-year-old guy working at the camp, Bill Murray, who's clearly hitting on a girl who looks like she's about 16. That's upsetting. Chris Makepeace, always a problem. Oh my God. Always a a, problem. Any movie with Chris Makepeace makes me want to run out of the room screaming. So that's a problem. He had pretty eyes, though. Oh, God. Stripes. (laughs) Stripes. I used to watch Stripes and enjoy. Now I watch it and I go, this movie is not funny. It's they not did not funny. age well. They did not age well. But hey. at the time, you were rolling on the ground, pissing hey. yourself. I still love Caddyshack. I still love Animal House. I still love Revenge of the Nerds. I'm going to put that out there. I just think Meatballs and, to a lesser degree, Stripes, it's like there's no plot. You know what I mean? It's just kind of Doesn't set matter. up gags. It's just Bill Murray riffing. And now, if the gags are funny enough, then you're cool with it. Now, Stripes, you're kind of kind of laughing through it but the moment they like get to to europe where they're like yeah. freeing people that movie not so funny anymore. it goes right off a cliff anyway any last thoughts on uh the burning sensation no but i have more thoughts on bill murray okay uh, he's a national treasure i know we've tried to ca- he's been almost canceled a half a dozen times but yes. he just resurrects like the phoenix love him but, and uh, Lost in Translation, one of my favorite films of all time. Saw it once, don't really have an opinion. Anything oh else? Lord. Uh, no, because I'm at a loss. Podcast is over. Podcast is over. <laughs> Record scratch. <laughs> Record scratch. Oh, <laughs> sweet Jesus. So, thank you very much. You can visit us across the interwebs. We're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. We're on X for the moment. We're on Facebook for the moment. Blue Sky Threads for the moment. We're also on YouTube. You might be watching us there. For the moment. You can you can also email us the podcast that wouldn't die at Gmail. Gmail. Um, you we are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere the finer podcasts are available. So don't forget to like, share, rate, and review, won't you? Won't you please? Aaron, what is your social media situation? I'm on the gram. 
The cult of Aaron joined the cult. Hashtag boom. Hashtag boom. As what we try to do each week is include fav- uh, comments from our friends across all social media. So let's take a look, shall we? Let's do that. These are all Disc- from the Ticker Talker. <laughs> These are all from the Ticker Talker discussing our film Idle Hands. Um, Almeida says, I freaking love this movie. Uh, Master GTJ says, Jessica Alba was fine in this. And Elwood Blue says, these guys are the best part of the movie, <laughs> but I totally jacked it to Jessica Alba in this. I should read these comments before I actually discuss it <laughs> on the show. Uh, thank you for that, Elwood Blues. Uh, discussing Deadly Friend. Uh, CJ Pony Boy says, I remember as a kid, me and my friends were whining the VHS at this scene and laughing our butts off. Comedy this is the scene ball. where they throw the basketball and throw Mama from the train and her head explodes. <laughs> it is the best part of the whole movie. It, it carries the film, in my it mind. It carries the film. We That's used to all pause you need. the bit at the exact impact moment. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And that, <laughs> sweet Jesus. The, Next, the whole budget went right there. No question. Next week, we're discussing the horror classic maniac cop which has really got an all-star cast i have to discuss this it's got tom atkins star of night of the creeps and halloween three season of the witch it's got bruce campbell star of all the evil dead films it's got richard roundtree i love bruce campbell richard roundtree was shaft for god's sakes it's it is truly an all-star cast so how do you watch maniac cop this is an important Is it on question. Pluto with ads? <laughs> Prime Video, free with subscription. Ooh. Peacock subscription, AMC Plus with subscription. Vudu, free with ads. Tubi with ads. Shutter with ads. Pluto TV with ads. Freebie with ads. So there are multiple places you can go right and now. Watch and watch ads. And watch <laughs> ads. And also watch Maniac Cop. So send in... Any favorite seeds, favorite quotes, comments, and questions, and we may talk about it on the show. So, thank you very much, and be well! Good day.